the Jennings family has just moved to the small town of Kanaima. Oh, Ross, smell that air. Oh, God. In search of a simpler life. Want to blow up a bullfrog? Okay. It's the perfect place. Goodbye crime, goodbye grime. Except for one pesty little problem. Come with me and look at the web. The web? I have a terrible fear of spiders. Come on, we live in the country now. It's time to work through this irrational, paralyzing terror. It's not irrational. <laughs> Hollywood Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present Jeff Daniels. Honey, we're in the living room. We need you to kill a spider. And John Goodman. Don't pretend to talk infestation management. Oh, my God, it's just a spider. Would anybody object if I tore this floor out? I would. False alarm, then lead on. There's no spider here. Every so often, in a little town somewhere, there is a health scare. There's a rumor going around that some kind of spider might have killed Sam Metcalf. Doubtful. Spiders make convenient culprits. <laughs> There's no spider here. I think one of your Venezuelan spiders hitched a ride here. There may be some spiders around here that are very dangerous. Dad, chill out. Just run. Oh! They spread out from a central nest in a web-like pattern and dominate the entire area. When that happens, this town is dead. Better record my private stock. Rock and roll! Hollywood Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present Arachnophobia, eight legs, two fangs, and an attitude. Perk up, Lloyd. If we find the spider that did this, you can arrest him. Arachnophobia, a thrill comedy. Okay, and we're back. Hey, with another edition of 90s Night. Uh, I'm your host, Benner, from Black Font Distro. And of course, I'm always joined by the awesome Kels McNells, who is to my uh, right. I, no, my left, my left. Um, you're right on the screen, right? So um, listen, thanks again for joining us. This is another edition, like I said, of 90s Night. And today we're reviewing the 1990s film, Arachnophobia, which is like a personal favorite of mine. I love this flick. Um, it's so much fun. Uh, Kels, you had never seen this before, right? This is and this was your suggestion. You were like, yes, hey, this is my suggestion. And this was a what? You haven't seen Arachnophobia? What? Situation. You haven't seen Arachnophobia? <laughs> So absolutely, we had to hop on this one. Uh, I I was very uh, nervous to watch this one because I do. Uh, find myself slightly discomforted by spiders, but I actually really enjoyed it. And I think that that kind of aided in the whole movie watching experience. So what did you go. just say? Slightly discomfort- discomforted, <laughs> slightly discomforted with spiders, <laughs> by spiders. By spiders. They, make me, they make me slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, listen, it's a fairly common uh, um, fear that a lot of people have. Yeah, um, and uh, it's a, it's the film. It's a great concept for the film. Uh, we're going to get into all kinds of things about it uh, over the next hour or so. Um, please. Thank you for tuning in. If you're watching us exclusively on YouTube, this is nineties night. It's part of black Fun distros YouTube channel. Uh, it's it, it's a, uh, it, it's in addition to our regular show, which is takeover Tuesday, um, which we, uh, um, which we which we have on uh, multiple platforms, but you can only watch '90s Night on YouTube. So please, if you are watching, give us a like, uh, uh, you know that little thumb thing down there, uh, subscribe and ring the bell so you get notifications on the next episode of '90s Night. And also, uh, we are launching a new show, um, which is called Cage Match Counterpoint, and uh, that show is actually going to be on YouTube as well, which we actually talk about big big blockbuster movies um, from the summer uh, just to kind of keep us going over the summer months. But again, uh, we wanted to get back to horror. So we're doing nineties night and nineties night always has got to be something from the nineties and it's got to be horror tinged and have horror elements to it. And that's why we're doing arachnophobia. So before we get into it, listen, I know the movies we made like in 1990, but we're spoiler warning. If you haven't seen the film or would like to see the film, you don't want anything ruined. Uh, this is your warning. We are going to be getting into plot details, character development, and uh, as well as the ending of the film and everything and all those things in between. Uh, so stop now if you don't want to know anything about arachnophobia. But we're going to assume that you like the movie just as much as we did and that you're here to get our insights and that sort of stuff as well. So um, let's dive into the synopsis. Of course, uh, we take a look at all the synopsises that are available 
available online, both from IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes, or the back of the home video release, in this case, the Blu-ray, um, because I just feel like the back of the Blu-ray is so much better than what's online now, which uh, take note, studios, you should really you should really get in on this. But uh, uh, let's go. Here we go. All right. Get caught in a web of laughs, thrills, and chills with arachnophobia from legendary executive producer Steven Spielberg. Now available for the first time on Blu-ray, featuring an all-new digital restoration with enhanced picture and sound. Jeff Daniels and John Goodman star in this creepy comedy, crawling with the perfect mix of fun and fright. Everyone is afraid of something. But when jo- Dr. Ross Jennings, Jeff Daniels, moves his family to a quiet place in the country, the one thing that bugs him most is terrifying everyone in town. For this unlikely hero, overcoming a childhood fear of spiders might just save the day. Enjoy the hair-raising entertainment of arachnophobia like never before on Blu-ray. I love the alliteration in that description. I was like, did I write this? (laughs) Oh, I know, I know. (laughs) self burn. Uh, For for our longtime listeners, um, Kels McNell's loves alliteration. Uh, That's, that's, yeah, that's what, that's what we do here. Hence, 90s night, takeover Tuesday. If you'll notice. Cage match counterpoint. Anyway. Um, uh, listen, uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is a wicked, wicked flick. Um, Kels, let's give us a, give us a quick rundown of the production and initial release of the film. Yeah, so this was released by Hollywood Pictures, which is actually a subsidi- subsidiary of Walt Disney Studios. So perhaps could we say that some of these uh, spiders are Disney princesses? Who's to say? Probably mm. us. Maybe we'll say it. It was directed by Frank Marshall and written by Don Jacoby and Wesley Strick. And it stars, as the aforementioned Jeff Daniels, John Goodman, Harley Jane Kozak, and the late great Julian Sands. Uh, The production occurred in 1989, but was premiered at um, somewhere, question mark, on July 18th, 1990s when the film was released. Awesome. And uh, yes, we did want to do this uh, review for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that uh, is that the film, like it would have come out 23 years ago, um, just recently, which is pretty cool. Uh, they all are also making uh, a reboot of the movie through Amblin. Um, and uh, they're working on that right now. Uh, but also as well, we just we, we felt, it, felt it was kind of a cool way to sort of just um, pay um, a little bit of respect to Julian Sands, who, of course, recently passed away, um, who is a fantastic actor and, uh, um, you know, puts in a great performance in this movie, too. So we felt it all kind of worked together and uh, gave me a reason to wear a purple shirt tonight. And um, yeah, so that's what we went with. Um, the film itself, uh, runtime, uh, a very you know very lean and economical one hour and 49 minutes. Um, domestic box office as well. Um, it, it scared up $53 million at the domestic box office. At the time, international box office wasn't a thing, uh, but it also um, generated $30 million in video rentals as well. So it was made on a modest budget of $22 million, which is a rough estimate, USD. Um, And so it was considered a a pretty great success uh, for when it came out. Um, Currently, 93% on Rotten Tomatoes with 45 reviews and uh, with the critical critical consensus reading that arachnophobia may not deliver genuine chills, but it's an affectionate, solidly built tribute to Hollywood's classic creature features. Yes. So the initial marketing of the film, uh, you know, the advertisers were kind of uncertain if they should market as a thriller or a comedy because clearly it's somewhere down the middle. So as you see in the trailer, it is marketed as a thrillomedy, which is a little clunky, but I'll allow it. Um, so the thrillomedy, say thrill, thrillomedy. It sounds vaguely like a, a malady of some sort. Uh, so the tagline for this one was eight legs, two fangs, and an attitude. Or alternatively, the suspense of Alien, the excitement of Jaws, the fun of Back to the Future, which I feel like is a fairly accurate uh, description <laughs> because it does have all of those things. I feel they were reaching for the marketing on this one. Um, yeah, they didn't really which, know what to do uh, with it. <laughs> yeah, but but it, which is which is kind of strange because the film itself is is um is 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 great. It does fall like I feel it. I feel it has way more in common with like Gremlins um, mm-hmm. than it does with Back to the Future and Alien. And um uh, and I always think of uh, I mean obviously the movie the, the movies came out at the same time, but I always think of Tremors as well when I watch this yeah. movie too. So. Yeah, cool, it was cool. kind of a, a, an interesting period of of the horror genre where they were doing those kind of thrillomedies, 
still awkward to say. Um, but they did have, like you mentioned, tremors and gremlins and arachnophobia, and they had this kind of great um, adventurous spirit to them with a little bit of comedy, a little bit of action, and uh, a little bit of spooky stuff too. So I think that's uh, really delightful. Now we're going to get into some into some plot elements and obviously talk about the characters and there's lots of cool stuff about this film including this including the soundtrack um and um and the score uh, as well as the uh, how the film kind of came together and also um and, and the producers behind the scenes as well um but before we do um Kels uh you typically have a drink uh, what are you drinking tonight so today I am drinking what I'm going to call the spider bite uh which is uh, blueberry gin and cranberry juice because it has like a little bit of a bite to it and it's got that nice kind of bloody color but it's also got a splash of lemonade because it's got some lovely hospitality to it, it reminded me of like the picnic scene near the beginning of the film where they're all kind of like not picnic but like the garden party where they're all kind of getting to know each other and having all the, the town folk over to know to meet the new doctor so yeah i wanted something that was a little friendly a little spicy a little feisty and uh all around delicious. And I think I did a decent job with this one. I have too much ice in it, but it's delicious. Now, uh, Kels is our residential mixologist as well. Uh, so I always just, I don't have the components um, uh, kicking around my house like she does in her fully stocked bar that's over there. So I kind of tried to make the similar thing. Um, but uh, this one is, uh, of course, um, it's uh, uh, some of our good friend, uh, Johnny Bootlegger, uh, Peach um, Syndicate Sour Peach. Uh, again, we're not sponsored, not sponsored Yet. by Johnny Bootlegger, but we'd like to be, <laughs> or we'd like to be have a show sponsored by somebody. Uh, so if you have any interest, please let us know. We have reached out to Johnny Bootlegger on Instagram, but uh, uh, we're going to keep plugging away and see if we can get, um, uh, hey, who knows, Syndicate City, Syndicate City Sour Peach. Uh, so I mixed it with that, um, as, as well as a little Miller High Life. Uh, again, mm -hmm. not sponsored by Miller High Life because uh, it's a champagne of beers, a little <laughs> bit of a high society for uh, um, for for um, for the Jennings family as yeah. they move from uh, from I guess they I can't remember where they move from. I don't San Francisco. They, do they move from San Francisco? I, yes. I missed that. But yes. um, San Francisco to um, this small town in Southern California, and I also put in just to get that little kind of drop of red. Uh, I have some of that Kool Aid. Um, yeah, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? It's like the squirt stuff you put like in the, the water Mio to make it taste like Kool Aid. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. delicious. I've been addicted to it. I've got all four <laughs> flavors in my cupboard, and I added a little bit of red Kool Aid, cherry Kool Aid in there just to give it that little kind of drop of uh, drop of blood look. But it's actually that's the closest I could do. I'm sorry, um, but it, it tastes pretty good. So hey, mm. cheers. We'll allow it. Cheers. <laughs> cheers, cheers. All right, so let's talk about arachnophobia. Um, I have some really fond memories of this film because. Um, and it was great to go back and kind of revisit it as well. I hadn't seen it in probably about maybe like seven or eight years. Um, but my first recollection of this movie is I watched it at a friend's place. I, I, I had a friend of mine who um, he had all the movie channels and uh, um, uh, or his, you know, his parents did. Uh, and he would uh, he would record all the films off of like whatever horror movies or whatever movies were on um, on the movie networks. He would record them on VHS. So he had this rows upon rows upon rows of like VHS tapes where you could record like three or four movies onto a VHS tape. And he was like, you got to check out the spider movie. It's awesome. And I think we were so young, we didn't even we couldn't even say arachnophobia, but we knew it was Spielberg and we knew it was like it was kind of it, like it was it was fun so i probably was you know i'd probably say i was maybe in grade five or grade i think grade five or grade probably grade five or grade six i think when i saw this film um i loved it i always loved john goodman in this movie and i just thought that the the the, the spiders were really well done and it was like it was kind of tongue-in-cheek but it was also really it, it, like i mean i grew up on stuff like you know gremlins and like uh back to the future and like uh, uh you know indiana jones and that sort of stuff it kind of falls in that 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 wheelhouse obviously um steven spielberg is one of the executive producers directed by frank marshall um as well who um obviously was longtime producing partner um and him and his wife wife um kathleen kennedy um also had a hand in um uh in 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 producing the film executive executively producing the film and uh with kathleen kennedy also acting as producer um this is just one of these like cool throwback flicks that um i just feel like they were on to something like you mentioned the thrillomedy being a bit clunky. I think the tagline's a bit clunky too. Um, but the film itself is pretty well made and sure. it's got, um, it just has that kind of like, uh, um, like a spark to it. 
Yeah, yeah, and I guess I think they were trying to um, like it, it was rated PG thirteen. So, so again, very similar to Gremlins. Um, I think it's a nice companion piece to be in any collection, and um, it it it's yeah. I mean, and I also like love the poster. Like, I just love it how yeah, it's like got that it's old iconic. school like sort of like like you know so many people kind of ripped off that sort of idea um it's mm-hmm. got this, the one single spider on the moon kind of like um you know it's just i don't know the sleepy town in southern california and uh uh taken over by rampant um vampire killing spiders <laughs> yeah and, and this movie uh, frank marshall kind of meant for it to be like uh the birds um just you know how that idea like people like to be scared but laughing like a roller coaster no one wants to be terrified is kind of the quote that he had when talking about this film um and one of the things that i think is really cool about this that i was when i was watching it again for the first time i was like trying to pay very close attention to determine how many of the spiders are practical and if there's any models or like what's going on there because like surely they can't have well-trained spiders that are just doing everything and and how many spiders they have that's that's insane but they did they had a lot of practical spiders uh and the safety of the spiders was obviously paramount throughout the entire production um there's one scene where john goodman like sprays an arachnid with insecticide and then like squashes it with his boot uh so they like had a dummy spider that they sprayed and then like he had like a hollowed out heel on his boot for the spider to like go in reverse essentially and and so it would just sit inside for the next take and anytime they had to have dead spiders they used bodies of spiders that had died like of natural causes to make sure it was all very ethical um they did a lot a lot a lot a lot of work to make sure that these spiders were well treated well taken care of and they used uh, a breed of spider called the avondale spider which is native to australia um I think native to New Zealand and Australia. So it's kind of like a a relatively harmless spider actually that um, doesn't really, it's not really poisonous, doesn't really bite people. It's that those are very kind of chill as far as spiders go. Um, But uh, the giant spider that they use in the film is the general uh, my spider husband um, was a a species of (laughs) bird eating tarantula who's uh, can be quite big quite scary looking and actually has a pretty nasty bite. Um, So I love the fact that they use so much practical effects in this, because of course we always talk about how practical is better. Practical is the way to go, particularly in horror, because like you like to be able to see it and feel it and feel the weight of it. And uh, even though there's not a lot of weight to those spiders, you can feel the weight of those spiders. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. And uh, where did you check it out? Like, how did you, how did you watch the film? I watched the film. (laughs) I rented it on think it was amazon prime or something like that or YouTube. Yay. i rented it online <laughs> um it's you know, also available I don't have yeah. 4k <laughs> it's also and it's also available on uh um on youtube as well so we'll be sure to put the links down in the description below where you can check out both uh where to um rent the film digitally and where to pick it up um uh, a physical copy as well uh this doesn't have a 4k release um shoot Oh, I don't know. Maybe a subsidiary of Disney. I don't know. I don't know what's happening at Disney right now. I have no idea. I wish they would. I don't know. I'll come work for you. I'll fix your physical department um, (laughs) overnight. We can put out a lot of super cool releases. This is a film that it looks decent on Blu-ray, but the Blu-ray is still a little little outdated. This movie would just eat up a 4K release because Mm. I think the... um, uh, the, like you just mentioned, like the majority of the spiders in this film are real. There's not a lot of CGI. It's either um, it's animatronic or it's um, uh, like it's a, a um, like a physical prop um, or it's actually a real spider. So yeah. I would love to see that in 4K. I think it would really, really benefit from that. And um, yeah, you know what? Uh, I got to say, um, you know, I know Kathleen Kennedy's been in the news a lot lately. I know she's being kind of raked over the coals and, and and whatnot. But you know what? Back in the day, she had her hand on a lot of cool projects. And this is, I think, is one of them. It's a, it's a smaller budget fil- budgeted film, um, did really well. And also, like, and like you mentioned, they had some ethical um, guidelines that they followed to the T mm-hmm. uh, by all accounts um, and, you know, didn't rely on CGI real realistically. Uh, they had a lot to kind of deal with the, 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 how to wrangle these spiders around the audience. And, and, yeah. you know, what I researched was, was that um, they really wanted the spiders in the same frame as the actors to, to, to create that sort of fear Um and uh and and that that realism and i i think they 
you know, it's, it's a huge success for them to be able to do that. Yeah. I think it's really cool that I, I didn't know that this would be something that you could do this with, but it makes sense that uh, to kind of get the spiders to go where they wanted them to, they would have like a combination of like vibrating wires because they won't cross over the vibration of the wires and like mm. lemon pledge furniture wax because they wouldn't walk over that either. So they would kind of create like this little path through the scene for the spider to walk down and then kind of like use a blow dryer, like a hair dryer to kind of encourage it to move along and just kind of keep it moving down the path so they could control where they went, they could control their movement and they could control like how fast they went by like you know getting the, the hair dry a little bit closer to kind of speed them up a little bit which is really cool that they had that kind of uh ingenuity when it comes to spider wrangling i guess um also apparently like the actors were all very cool with the spiders like they weren't scared of them i guess you kind of would have to not be after spending so much time with them working day in and day out and, and i was reading about there is um the one scene, the shower scene, where uh, the spider kind of crawls along the top and then, you know, it's, it's supposed to sort of jump and land um, It's just on her neck when the blow dryer is turned on, but it yeah, like landed yeah. directly on her face. Exactly. Yeah. And the actress was like, she felt it land on her face and she's like, oh, this is perfect. Okay, I'm going to hold into it. And she just like stayed with it, knowing where it was and like kind of leaned into it and was like waited for just the perfect moment to scream and then afterwards it's like oh is the spider okay we gotta like get him back out of the drain and everything there was which i think is really cool like they were just not afraid of these little guys and they worked very closely with them obviously and uh and and i feel like you don't really see a lot of animal wrangling in, in films anymore i know that notoriously like you don't want to work with kids or animals um and i feel like this is kind of uh, reminiscent of that era of 90s film where everyone was doing both like homeward bound tons of animals you had like look who's talking you had kids like I feel like kids and animals were just in everything in the 90s and and this is kind of a really cool way to include animals in a horror sense that's yeah and and, uh, and it's funny like you mentioned the the scene where John Goodman uh, crushes the one spider mm-hmm. uh, with his boot and it's a quick cut and they had a hollowed out boot um, and uh, actually uh, the sound effect uh, uh, so the Foley artist went back in and they used uh, um, uh, mustard packages and potato chips to cr- to create that like crunching Crunch. sound <laughs> as he crushes this uh, this spider underneath his boot heel but um, uh, yeah I mean it's 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 funny like you just mentioned. Um, uh, you know, that's kind of how they were making movies in the nineties and, and especially this movie being 1990, uh, having a 1990 release, like obviously it was at the tail end of the eighties. Um, the other film that this movie kind of reminds me of a lot of is, um, in, in not so many ways, but some ways is uh, poltergeist as well. Yeah. And I just feel because, you know, Frank Marshall, you know, talented producer. He directed a few things. This was his directorial debut, uh, but I, I feel this movie has got Spielberg's fingerprints all over oh, it. Yeah. And at least his recommendation to do a couple things, um, a few things of note that I noticed uh, uh, through the film. Uh, one is that the camera is sort of always, especially at the start of the movie, um, is always kind of on the on the ground. It's it, like uh, from the spider's perspective, which is which is a, a tactic that uh, or strategy that Spielberg used in ET. He used to, yeah. he used to put the camera about essentially like where a kid's height would be. It was, which was ET's height. Right. Which is why they argue that a lot of kids love ET, including myself when I watched it. So, um, but uh, I would say like, even the start of the, uh, um, I felt like there was a few things in this movie that I, as a kid, I never picked up on. And I don't even think the last time I watched it, I even picked up on it, but just watching it this time with sort of like a really sort of uh, objective eye um, was that the opening sequence is very, very reminiscent of Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah. um, when they're going through Venezuela, the film was actually um, uh, the film was actually the first film. They say was shot in Venezuela. Uh, they set up a base camp there and they shot there for a month. Um, to capture the opening sequence of the of the film, uh, lots of really great panoramic shots in the helicopter, and very very reminiscent of Jurassic Park. Um, I also felt uh, too like there's a there's a um, uh, there's a shot of the spider, the shadow of the spider uh, in the tent, and you see this, and and that's I think they I feel like Spielberg kind of like either kind of repurposed those ideas in Jurassic Park or or, mm-hmm. or Jurassic Park two, um, but also maybe he just made suggestions and was like, Hey, we should do this because you don't reveal, especially even at the start of the movie, like the first, let's say 20 minutes or half an hour of the film, you don't really see the spider that much. Like you see it, like you see it kind of going into somewhere. You see it kind of like, you know, a shadow or whatever. Yeah. 
peeks away. Um, you do see it in a jar, and but I think there's like there's lots of there's lots of uh, um, uh, great um, jump scares in this movie too, which I think are are pulled off really well. And and mm-hmm. I do feel like it's a funny film too. I think there's some lot lots of uh, and, and and we'll get into that with some of our favorite quotes throughout the film as well. Yeah, John Goodman especially I think is uh, such a great character in this because I feel like he could only be played by John Goodman. Like it's, it just seems like such a good, uh, just a good role for him. Uh, it just seems very fitting. Um, and, and I just love that character. Like he's just, he's just kind of, I, I forget what um, exactly the score is every time he's on the screen, but there's like this kind of like weird theme, like some weird musical theme that plays every time he comes onto screen. And it's like, kind of like honky tonk, kind of goofy, like, and it just seems very yeah, yeah. out of place with the rest of the score, <laughs> but just sort of like roll it in like, Hey guys, I'm here. And it's very kind of plucky and silly and goofy. And it kind of just tells you right away who he is as a character, along with the costume design, those excellent glasses I think he has on. Well, let's um, talk about the casting then. Yeah. Let's too, talk about the casting I think, for I think, sure. I mean, he's perfectly cast. Um, yeah. I always, I always loved him in the movie when I was a kid too. Um, he kind of feels like this sort of like, like, especially when I was watching it this time, he, he almost feels like he's like the fifth ghostbuster. Like yeah. he, he really feel, or he's, if he, he feels like, uh, like he could be like Dan Aykroyd's like cousin or. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or and he's like, he couldn't get into the ghostbusters, relation. but he's like, you know what? I can do something similar. And like, I'm going to do bugs. Cause we yeah, don't I'm have a ghosts spider buster, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah i felt like uh uh and the casting in this film is actually really strong I, and i and i felt mm-hmm. like they just i mean i felt jeff daniels is really well cast as well yeah. um i had to look this up because i love jeff daniels and of course everyone remembers jeff daniels from from dumb and dumber but he's been he's had such a storied career and such a varied career of roles that he's played um and when i was watching this i was like how old is this guy like and this again, this is another. I mean, we do, we should totally do a segment of called like now you feel as old as dirt because like I looked it up and Jeff Daniels would have been thirty four or thirty five when he made this movie, which is um, yeah, that's uh, that's way younger than me. So um, it, but I was like, man, he's like full fledged doctor. He's got a house like crazy. So anyway, um, but also um, supporting cast is really really good as well. Um, obviously Julian Sands, um, you know. I think he's, I think he's really well cast in this. He's sort of like the, mm-hmm. the, the British doctor that's sort of like, like somewhat elitist, but not really. Um, uh, and, and of course, um, uh, of course the, the, uh, um, the actress that plays Jeff Daniels, Daniels, wife, who is not in a ton of stuff. Um, and, uh, I just have to, I, you know what? I can't, I don't actually have her name up on screen for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's very, very, uh, she reminds me of, um, uh, uh, sorry, Harley Jane Kozak, um, plays Molly Jennings, who is, is, is Jeff Daniels, wife in the film. And, uh, she kind of reminds me of like, I feel like she could be related to Helen Hunt. Um, she yeah. kind of gives off that vibe. Uh, she, she was in a, Helen Hunt too, like for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And she's yeah. been, she was in a few films, done a ton of TV, um, since, but, um, I really like her character in this too. Like, I feel like she plays, uh, a great supporting role. Um, and, uh, yeah, every the, the townsfolk are funny. Like I feel like everyone sort of and, and what I like about this film too, and, and let's dive into the plot a little bit as we talk about these characters, but um is just like everything seems pretty tight. Like yeah. every like things happen in the film that make sense. Like, listen, this isn't this isn't an Academy Award winning film. It's a creature feature, right? And but the little things that they do, characters you know, they come up, but they play a role in the future in, in like the second act, third act um, and, and little things that are mentioned and, and seen and stuff are kind of very, they're, they're planted uh, in the start of the film, very, in a very clever way uh, when they show up later on in the film, you're like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I sure. couldn't help, but think like, God damn it. Like, why can't they make movies like this anymore? Because I, I don't know, maybe I'm looking, maybe I'm looking at this film through rose colored glasses. I don't know, but I just feel like today, like they don't think of stuff like that. Like things just happen or there's something that happens and then the plot moves forward. But that stuff that happened in the, in the, in the start doesn't necessarily factor in. It just feels like this. It's like, well, we need a starting point. So we'll just start it here. Um, 
this film for me, I thought was like, I thought it was, it's very, very, it's very, very clever in how it, 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 it writes itself and how it, uh, um, like I mentioned, like it, it, things have a reason, uh, yeah. to show up in this film. Um, I thought it was, thought it was pretty cool, but your thoughts. Yeah. I feel like it's very economical and it's in its screenplay like it just in terms of like you said the way that things are set up everything is leading to something else everything's kind of a kickback to something previously um which makes a lot of sense because you don't want to have any this movie doesn't really have any extra fat on it like every even like that big picnic scene that i was talking about or the garden party scene that i was talking about every little bit of conversation that kind of happens in there alludes to something with the characters or like something that comes up a little bit later in the plot or like why these people are the way they are like little bits and pieces here and there like oh this woman's really upset because her son has died and it's the son that came back from venezuela and it's just kind of like it's just kind of nicely peppered throughout um i really enjoy the cast as well uh, i think her name's margaret hollands uh, played by mary carver the 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 little lady at the beginning who kind of like takes uh jeff daniels character under her wing and is like all right i'm gonna get you some patience and like she's super lovely and she's the first to, mm. to go unfortunately spoilers but um i thought she was delightful we said that at the start this time we did we say that at the, start. at the start of the show yes yeah so she's she's delightful i love her in this uh jeff daniels i'm gonna age myself here a little bit because my first memory of him in a movie is like fly away home in 1996 <laughs> Yeah, so. hey, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. <laughs> it's a great movie. So uh, I, I really love the inclusion. I, I think uh, Harley Jane Kozak, who we were mentioning earlier, kind of reminds me of Helen Hunt. Also reminds me a little bit of like Laura Dern in Jurassic Park. She's kind of like the intersection between like yeah. Laura Dern and uh, and Helen Hunt. I think she's kind of like the the Pokemon evolution, like somewhere in the middle between those two. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and and uh, I, I I really enjoy this type of storytelling where it's very upbeat and very just kind of pulls you along and it feels like this big kind of madcap journey that you're on. Um, but like you said, everything kind of has a purpose. Everything is there for um, support of the plot and support of the story, support of the dialogue and the characters. And um, even the silly bits are, are just really enjoyable. Like it's, yeah, it's, like it's totally kind of a little bit of a mishmash sometimes, but at the same time, like it, works that's that's kind of just the tone of the film is having that different uh musical beats to it that are kind of all over the place and a little silly that it just kind of flows well um, yeah so so yeah. you mentioned you mentioned that uh like the photographer who who is killed at the start right like, like yeah. he's from the town and obviously he gets transported back to the town right. that's how like the stowaway spider comes from venezuela so it's like it makes sense right it's not the, like the spider doesn't just show up like there's there's a reason for him to get like to get back there so and i noticed that too so then i started making some notes on this and this is how i got into this train of thought but there's lots of things and, and this is just some of the notes I, I copied down here but like um the garden party um good show of um like it's, it's a good show of, of time passing so mm -hmm. I think it's a month later. She goes, oh, we'll wait a month and then we'll get you some, we'll get you some patience. Um, but also it does a few things. Um, you, you find out that the lady there, like the mom of the photographer is there. She's, and she, she's having a hard time. She's drinking too much. And cause she's having a hard time of her son passing. Um, lots of little things in, like there's some funny things in there too, but, uh, but also um, they meet the townsfolk and, and it just, it just kind of, it, it, so there's a reason for that party to happen, right? Like there's, there, yeah. the reason is that, that they want, like the the old lady who is their neighbor is trying to help him out. She likes the new young doctor as opposed to the old, you know, crappy doctor that's been in the town since like the war. Right. Which is like 50 years or whatever. Um, but like that gives a reason for everyone to get together. It makes sense. And therefore you meet these other characters and these other little things that, that, um, that go on. You also find out a little bit. So, and, and there's a couple of other things that, that happen just like that. And I start to, now I'm starting to think about other movies I've seen recently, like modern Hollywood movies. And it's like, mm -hmm. holy shit, man, they don't actually do this stuff. Um, it's exposition, right? Like it's the way of introducing the characters. I think that it's really smart having it be at that garden party because she's going around being like, oh, this is so-and-so. This is what they do. This is who they are. This is, so you, so you kind of get little introductions to the characters, but you also just through little bits of interaction you see as you walk past and, and see little snippets of like the husband and wife that are, you know, um, hiding food and shuffling food away that later on are like eating the popcorn and that's how they go. And uh, it, it's a really good way to have that exposition of character, which I think is something that like you were saying, a lot of movies struggle with that exposition. Yeah. Um, 
uh, one just kind of reminded just, go sorry. sorry go ahead go ahead so one thing it kind of reminded me with just quickly with the exposition here is um uh in uh old when there's the kid that's going around to everybody and says like hey what's your name and what do you do Mm-hmm. Like it's a very kind of like ham fisted, but kind of clever and innocent way to get exposition on each of the characters. And it's kind of it made me like this made me think of that, even though it should be the other way around. But because I saw that one first, um, it kind of reminded me of that of like a, a way to introduce the characters. It's very like innocent and very wholesome, but also just kind of immediately tells you who you're looking at, who you're talking to. Yeah. Like, I mean, I felt like this, like, so, so for instance, the one thing I w- really wanted to focus on is um, like the third act in this movie is pretty good. And uh, you know, I, I've been thinking a lot about this lately is like it, your ending is everything. It's the last thing that people remember when they walk out of your film usually. Mm-hmm. Uh, so make sure it's tight. And, and yeah. the things that like the, um, the lock in the cellar, uh, like it, it's funny, it's a throwaway line, but but Jeff Daniel says, I'm going to turn my basement to a wine cellar. I've got all this fancy, super expensive wine. Like he's the upper elite from San Francisco, like moving the fish out of water into this small kind of country bumpkin town sort of. Yeah. Um, he says, I'm going to get a big lock for the cellar for my investment. Um, and then you don't really think about that until the end, right? Because he can't, he actually can't get out of the cellar uh, because of this giant lock he's put on to, to stop people from going in to steal his wine. And then also he goes in and he's actually building the wine cellar. Um, he realizes that uh, like he's got the nail gun, which comes into play later. Uh, and also, nail gun. <laughs> yeah. And then he, yeah, the shotgun nail gun. Um, but also he, he, uh, um, because he finds out that the floors have maybe termites in it and that's how they call the exterminator, which is John Goodman. That's how he shows up. All that stuff comes into play because the floors are rotted out. Right. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. so when all this stuff happens in the third act, one Jeff Daniels falls over the bear over the banister falls all the way, which is a great stunt by the way, and falls right through the floor. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they would have set that up in a movie that t- these days. I think that person just falls off the banister and falls through the floor. Oh, we got to get yeah. him to the basement. So we just got to, whereas I think before they were like, that's all finessed in the script. Right. And said, yeah. look, if we, if we say that the t- house maybe has termites, the floors are rotting out. And, you know, then that way we can use that. Like, I mean, I, I feel like that amount of, of, of thought kind of went into this flick, which I really, really do appreciate. Um, uh, I did like just like kind of the fact that like all the townsfolk is dying around Jeff Daniels as soon as he kind of examines them and he gets labeled yeah. Dr. Death. Dr. Death, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty funny. Um, and also as well, like plays into the fact that, um, you know, just is everyone taking him seriously? Is this actually happening? Of course, the audience knows that it is. Um, but also as well, like having uh, Jeff Daniels be a doctor uh who who also has arachnophobia like it this is it would have been very very easily uh um you know um or, or it would have been an easy scapegoat if they just made like the daughter afraid of spiders or yeah. the wife afraid of spiders like that's like it's almost like it's it almost it's almost too simple it's like to make him in, and he has this backstory about the spider that crawls up yeah. his leg and he's a baby which and then again, it comes back to that later comes yeah, back yeah. comes back at the finale of the film and the other thing too as well was that um uh and and again it's like it's like uh uh like his wife goes out to the to like she's she's revealed at the party to be a retired stockbroker right um and that's why they've been able to kind of move out to the country and he's going to start up his own practice, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but she's also a photographer. Like she kind of does that in her spare time. She goes out to the to the barn to take a, a, a few photos and she sees all the spider webs. So baha, aha, reveal takes, you know, Jeff Daniels, you know, there's that out to the barn. He has that sequence there as well. But then when she sets up uh, his office, she's hanging the photos um, on the wall and it's not revealed till later that those are actually the photos that she took. And so she just took some black and white photos and put them on the wall to, you know, to spruce the place up. It's not till Julian Sands character walks through and goes, where is this? Mm-hmm. And it's a photo of the a spider web that she took in the barn. And that's how he realizes how, or at least that's how Julian Sands comes to the realization that the nest is probably at Jeff Daniels's house. And I was yeah. like, man, that's like little brilliant things. That's like just, and I, I don't maybe brilliance overselling it a bit, but just the fact that like they're they they focus on these little things that like, hey, a character didn't just like come up with this, right? Because yeah. flip side wise on the the other characters who are um you know Julia San Julia Julian Sands uh, assistant um Jeff Daniels and of course jo, uh, uh, um John Goodman they come up to they come to the conclusion that the houses are 
in a circle on the map and that the middle of the house in the middle is, is Jeff Daniels, house, right. The Jennings house. Um, and then they're rushing to that too. So it's like, okay, you have these characters. It's not just everyone just being led around. It, mm-hmm. It's like characters are making their own conclusions, um, and come and, and doing things that kind of make sense to, to their own personalities as well as the other characters that they're supporting. Yeah. I don't know. I got, I got to say, I'm in on this and I'm going to yeah. keep an eye on it as we go through more nineties flicks, because I really do feel like that's something that's missing in modern script writing. And I feel it's like super easy to do, but I agree. Well, even like the introduction of John Goodman's character, like again, having him come to the house to look at the termites, that's the introduction of him to that ring, that inner circle of characters that when they need an exterminator, they're not just like pulling out the yellow pages and be like, all right, who are we going for? They're like, oh, I know this guy where he came to my house. Let's call this guy. It's a way to introduce the character, not only to the audience, but to the plot as well so that they can bring him back later and have it not just be this arbitrary guy that just shows up that we've seen before in previous scenes at other people's houses, but these characters have no relationship with. So it kind of creates that relationship early on as well. It creates that tie into the plot. It creates that tie into uh, to the house as well so he's kind of familiar and then also as a complete side note but the whole scene of the house uh, and that big climactic everything's coming from everywhere scene reminded me so much of slither i can see the huge amount of inspiration that's a, that yeah that's another great ex- another great example yeah another yeah a like, huge amount of inspiration must have been taken from this like even just the the layout of the house like that staircase going up that that kind of curved staircase um reminds me like it's it's straight out of slither and i i really kind of or slither is straight out of arachnophobia mm-hmm. i should say and, and i, I gotta really say like great editing in the house um mm-hmm. with like when they're looking through uh you know like uh through the windows through halls uh with the spiders um through the uh, windows, just through the halls sorry some some good uh um some just just some good just some good editing work and and making you feel like you're in the house with them and that they can't get out of there. Um, yeah, great, great stuff. I mean, it's not it's not like it's not this this massively suspenseful film. It it's a thrillomedy, right? <laughs> so yeah. so it's like, but it's still really really well done. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean I mean again, use of practical effects always is 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 the best way to go. Um, we should throw up a, a couple of these are some of the lobby cards that were released yes. during the film's uh production uh or or promotion and uh you know great great shot here of course of um you know uh, all the main all the main players and uh, of course jeff daniels uh john goodman and julian sands um and of course uh you know julian sands passing away recent recently but uh also what i was saying um, before was that um you know just the fact that characters are kind of introduced they go away and then they kind of come back in the second or third act it's like but there's a reason for them to show up there's a reason for them to come back to the plot um i i think that the 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 uh, the, the reveal the light revealed to julian sands character that the 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 venezuelan spider that he kind of has um in a uh, uh you know in one of um his uh his uh his uh uh I guess what what would you call those terrariums? I guess I think mm-hmm. terrarium. Yeah, terrarium. Yeah, terrarium. Um, sure. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> sure. uh, but it, when he realizes that, oh wait, that's like you know everyone just blames spiders for re- regular health scares, et cetera, et cetera. And then he realizes this. Oh no, wait a second. Hold on. It's 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 actually that's probably likely that it came from Venezuela because the photographer was from that town, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Really, 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 really well done. And, and again, it's like like I'm not saying this movie should should win any Oscars. I'm just saying that it's like it's just a it tight story. And it's like you know, it's like yeah, it's like <laughs> under two hours, more than ninety minutes, but under two hours. I think that's yeah. a sweet spot for where a lot of movies should aim for, especially nowadays, unless you have the content to fill up that runtime. But uh, and, and of course, you know, a, a quick um, uh, quick shot of John Goodman again, again looking like he should be uh, the long lost cousin of one of the <laughs> Ghostbusters. I'd love to see John Goodman in in one of maybe one of the new reboot Ghostbusters maybe bring him in. But uh, yeah, uh, but of course, like when he says, uh, "Can we rip out these floors?" and uh, and <laughs> you know, the Mrs. Jennings says, uh, "says uh, no." <laughs> He's like, "Okay, then uh, lead on. Like, we'll move on from that." Um, really kind of cool. Uh, uh, just like little quirks and and. Um, uh, like you said, he's got the bottle, the Coke bottle glasses, and he's got like the headphones on. And I don't know, like it's, yeah. it's pretty funny. So, I mean, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, so, you know, going, going back to like the, the, the film, um, do you have any favorite scenes or favorite quotes from the film that you kind of, uh, that you kind of picked up on? 
not so much quotes, but favorite scenes. I one of the first ones that like actually kind of like when I was watching it gave me a good reaction was uh, at the beginning when the first victim, I guess, is sort of like lying in the cot and it's like you can see the spider in the shadows kind of creeping around and it's like very kind of tense. And then he looks under the blanket and the spider's right there just like bites into his stomach. I was like, oh, okay. And this is, this is the thrillomedy I'm here for. So that was kind of uh, the emphasis on the thrill. <laughs> the emphasis on the thrill portion of the thrillomedy. Uh, so I really liked that scene. I love the scene at the end, of course, with again, the slither kind of scene uh, was, was really great. Um, just basically my nightmares is just like spiders coming from every surface. I, I can handle spiders in small size and small quantities, but if it's like that many and I'm like, I don't, I don't know where to go at this point, I'm doomed. Um, and uh, I think my other favorite scene would be, um, I think like just the, the one that also, again, kind of gave me a very visceral reaction was the shower scene. Uh, Cause it also mm, was tied course, in yeah. with like the, almost the toilet scene too, where like the guy sits down on the toilet. And like, oh, it's <laughs> yeah, going to be yeah. a double whammy of like, I can never <laughs> go into the bathroom ever again. Like, well, I kind of felt like they did a good job of that when they, they were like, okay, so this is kind of maybe like, uh, maybe this is, maybe this is a woman's uh, greatest fear is like having a shower and a spider jumping on, on, yeah. well, of course it was supposed to be on her neck, but jumps on her face and then like crawls down her. And then I would say, a, yeah, the, the, like, you know, the dude's greatest fear is like, you know, sitting on, on the can and <laughs> there's a poisonous a spider in there <laughs> right so like um i i just i thought that was that was pretty well done um yeah i think my uh, my favorite one of my favorite scenes and, and the scene one of the scenes i remember as a kid was a scene where they open up the um uh they open up the coffin when it gets back to uh the town mm-hmm. and um and and the reaction of the people like the one the one guy's obviously it's a weird every corner every single fucking movie ever made is like a weird guy always eats on the job I was right? say, always eating always i don't know if eating. that I, I i didn't have enough time to research this but i i'm is that the first time that's being like a guy like eating a club sandwich like in in i can't remember because it, it seems like that happens in every movie yeah. and i'd love to see if it ever happens before it must be in the 80s somewhere but like um if you have any, if you if you can let us know if you've ever seen that in a movie before, first please leave a comment down below. First known eating a club sandwich. What is the first known instance? <laughs> or a bag of, of chips. Like, he's, he's eating a bag of ruffles in this movie too. Yeah. Um, but like the so. scene where they they pop the cut and they, they they all take a they kind of take a gasp and then it goes over. The camera doesn't show you what's happening in in the coffin right away. There's some suspense there, and then it shows the body and it's completely drained and and he. He makes a phone call. He says, we got to do a a closed casket. We can't do open casket for this guy. And I just thought that's a great scene. Um, The scene when I was a kid that got me is when they go over to the same, the the coroner's house and he's watching the, watching wheel of fortune, uh, which is probably, (laughs) that's an inside joke, but like, but um, with his wife and uh, of course the spiders in the popcorn bowl. And, uh, but when they go and find him and the the spider crawls out of his, I think it's out of his mouth or out of his nose. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I think it's out of his mouth. When I was a kid, that looked way more realistic than it does in this movie. But I think that's probably because I watched it on like taped VHS off the TV at the time yeah. and not necessarily on Blu-ray on like, you know, a bigger screen TV. Yeah. Um, but still, and and I love the scene with the nail gun where he, he fucking, he, he cocks the nail gun like, uh, uh, like a la Terminator 2, even though this movie came out before Terminator 2. And like uh and like you know shoots the spider midair and and pastes it right to the right to the nest mm. i think it's a great i think it's a great ending to the movie um it brings all those things together uh and uh yeah that's that the, i think those are my favorite scenes i've got some favorite quotes too um talking about the comedy angle of the movie right we talked a lot about suspense but um yeah uh, when they're talking about what to do with the old doctor that won't retire who kind of goes back on his word and says and and tells uh, Jeff Daniels he's not gonna not gonna retire. Uh, Jeff Daniels retort to his wife when he says like he's like, oh, what are we what are we gonna do? And he's like, I don't know. We could kill him, <laughs> which I think was funny. Um, when the kids are going outside to play with the neighbor and he says, he's like, want to bet that they're going to go chase fireflies or something. And it cuts to the kids running away. And then, and the country, the country kid goes, you want to blow up a bullfrog? <laughs> Which I thought was really funny. And um, when they're at the party too, and and they're saying uh, the dad is uh, the football coach is saying that, Oh, my son is a, uh, my son is a football player. He's a quarterback. He's um, you know, uh, I coached a team and uh, uh, Jeff Daniels, his wife, 
uh, it says, uh, it says nepotism, huh? And then and the coach's wife says, actually we're Baptists. And I yeah. thought that was, a, that, that got a pretty good laugh, um, too. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, um, it's, um, uh, it, it's it's it, i thought the jokes were pretty good i thought they yeah. i thought the comedy was like well balanced and it kind of relieves the tension of course and and you could tell they were like again this whole thing was they were trying to make a movie that was like was fun and that was like kind of like a, a like a, frank marshall's quoted numerous times as saying it's like a fun house right like he yeah, wants exactly. it to be like like you laugh and you scream and i thought the jump scares were like i said before were really well placed and uh yeah i mean um but listen uh we're gonna wrap this up uh fairly soon but um let's talk about some interesting facts from the movie as well uh before we go yes what do you guys uh so the cast actually adopted a few of the spiders that were in the film which i think is really precious very sweet um and then researchers at the university of california riverside named a newly discovered worm species after jeff daniel's role in the movie because the worm uh, Tarantabellus Jeff Danielesi is one of the only two known worms to infect tarantulas. And I That's know awesome. I heard how to pronounce that, <laughs> but I don't care. That's fine. Taranta, um, Tarantabellus Jeff, Jeff Danielesi. Yeah. Tarantabellus Jeff Danielesi. Sh- sure. Yes. Um, there's also a video game version of this uh, that was released in May 1991 for Amiga, uh, Commodore 64 and DOS. I've never wanted to own a Commodore 64 more than I do right now. (laughs) Just for this game. Uh, There was a novelization of the film as well that was written by Nicholas Edwards. There was a comic book adaptation of the film uh, that was written by William Rostler with art by Dan Spiegel. And my favorite, favorite, favorite lasting legacy moment of this film is the end credits song, which is Don't Bug Me by the one and only Jimmy Buffett. And it's incredible. And as soon as that song started playing in the end credits and I kind of listened to the lyrics, it was like, wait a minute. I know that voice. Who is Jimmy that Buffett. Voice? Welcome to Margaritaville <laughs> and arachnophobia. Yeah. And I love that so much. That just the song is amazing. It's, it's called so don't good. bug me. <laughs> I know it's like find a YouTube and like link to it in the in description. Okay, below. We are going to put a so link good. down below. Uh, we will find the song if we can on YouTube. We'll put a link in the comments. Please check out the description. Um, it's 199% worth your time to check out. You will have yeah. a laugh. You'll want it on your playlist for the rest of the summer. I guarantee it. Um, I, I laughed really hard too, because I had, I, you had watched it. I was going to wait till you watch the movie first. Cause I was like, I want, I, I think you'll like it, but like, if you, if you hated it, maybe we do, maybe we would do something else, but like, yeah. but then I, and you said, Oh, I'm just, I'm just rocking it to Jimmy Buffett right now. And I was like, Jimmy Buffett, like that's a little <laughs> random. Like in, in, and it was like in, in the, um, in, in the film, uh, uh, it's, it's, it, I love, I also have a thing about uh, funny tracks at the end of movies. Like I just, yes. I, for some, I love, I have playlists on my iTunes with like the crappy songs from like eighties movies. And sometimes they're awesome. Like dream warriors, mm-hmm. But I'm just mm-hmm. saying, like, there's sometimes there's other weird, <laughs> weird songs that are worth digging up. I love yes. having them as part of my collection. I've got to add that one for sure, 100. percent um, I a couple of things that I noticed uh, through the film was um, uh, on the TV at the end when the family's in the house when the spider there's a spider that comes down. It's actually uh, an episode of Family Ties starring Michael J. Fox. Um, that's that's what that a kind was. of a that's a cool I tie-in. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a cool tie-in because when uh, Michael J. Fox was also shooting uh, Back to the Future, which was another Amblin production, obviously Steven Spielberg producing, Robert Zemeckis directing, um, Michael J. Fox was cutting time between shooting Back to the Future and Family Ties at the same time. So that was kind of a cool, Isn't that was a cool uh, um, and tie-in as well. And uh, yeah, I, I just felt, um, uh, oh, and yeah, I just had, Jimmy Buffett song "Don't Bug Me" is absolutely hilarious. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's all I got for arachnophobia. Um, yeah. Final thoughts? What do you think? Recommend? Uh, eight spindly legs up. I'll say. So Kelly does her ratings out of ten. I do my ratings out of five because I'm old school. <laughs> but hey, they still count. Same thing. Uh, I give this movie a same thing, four to five. Uh, I just think it's a fun time. It's a movie you should put on your shelf if you like creature features, and I like. I like just well done creature features. I think, I mean, listen, tell us in the comments below, which film you think we should review next on nineties night um, or on a future episode. And we'll try and get to it. But I feel like tremors. I feel like we should do tremors. Oh, 
Yes, I, I, Tremors. I fucking love Tremors. And Tremors is another movie. Like I really want to rewatch it now and figure out. Cause I know that there's things in Tremors, but which is like the, uh, like, like just things, things happen in the movie that play an important part later on. And I just feel like we don't get that right now in, in, in like bigger films. And like, yeah. I don't know if it's a rush job or what, but I just I like hire the these span thing or what. I don't know. But I like, I, like, can't expect I, audience but, members to remember yeah. things from early on in the film to come back later on in the film. I don't know. Is it really though? I mean, like, I, I just know. don't, I don't understand. And it's like, it's funny too, because, um, like these guys are st- like the guys that wrote Kate. Okay, so uh, let's talk about it just before we go. Cause I think it's super important is that the guys that wrote this movie, the, this movie went on to do like some really good fucking shit. And it's like, they're still alive. Like, I don't understand why they can't just go and find these guys and be like, Hey, can you write the next uh, movie that we need? Can you write this, that, and the other? Like, I don't know, maybe they're retired. I have no idea, but like, I just, I just wonder, um, like, I just, I'm going to pull this up just on IMDb. So just, uh, just bear with me here. But like, I think, um, one of the guys went on to write Cape Fear. He, he wrote the Cape oh, Fear remake oh, directed by, okay. by, uh, Martin Scorsese starring Robert De Niro and Nick Nolte, which is another fantastic movie. Also a film. I think we should put on an attach on our nineties night list. Um, I'm just trying to, oh my God, of course it's not pop, popping up when I want it to, but like, uh, uh, yeah, Don Jacoby. Uh, yes, he wrote Light Force. Uh, he went on to write Vampire starring James, James Woods and also Double Team. Double Team's not that great, but like, I do like Double Team. Also, Evolution. Um, and he also wrote Invaders from Mars and Death Wish 3, uh, and also Blue Thunder. Um, so he had written a few films, like he'd written Death Wish 3, Blue Thunder, uh, Philadelphia Experiment, Life Force before he wrote this movie. Um, and then the other writer that co-wrote the script with him, um, is, uh, I believe Wesley Strick and Wesley Strick, I believe went on to write Cape Fear, but I'm just going to pull his name up here just so I don't misquote this. Um, but, uh, yeah, he went on to, yes. So he wrote, uh, um, Return to Paradise. He did the remake of Cape Fear. Uh, he wrote Wolf, starring um, Michelle Pfeiffer and Jack Nicholson. And then he's certainly, you know, recently gone on to to, um, uh, to write uh, uh, episodes of The Man in High Castle and Carnival Row and that sort of stuff. So I don't know. I mean, I just, um, I, I just wish like these guys are writing TV episodes. Um, oh, he also wrote the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street, which you could argue is a good movie or a bad movie, maybe, but. Uh, like, I don't know. I'm not, I just, uh, he wrote the saint as well. So like find these guys, like see what they're doing, get them to write like a horror flick or get them to write like something that's like with a bigger budget, because I'm not seeing it on these 250, $300 million films. I'm not seeing this level of screenwriting. And that's to me crazy. Yeah. Good that's it. We're thoughts. tired. <laughs> <laughs> that's our final thoughts <laughs> those are my final thoughts hire these guys arachnophobia um listen we'll put we'll, like, like i said the links will be below um if you'd like to check it out we'll put some links as to where you can find the find the f- film to buy on physical media and also I'm listen for the record, don't bug me <laughs> don't bug me you're gonna want to check out that song and i'll get on the horn and try and get in touch with disney get them to put me in charge of the physical stuff. We'll get that release of barbarian too, while we're at it. Okay. Thank Sound you. like a plan. Yes. I'm on, I'm on top of that. That's great. <laughs> All right, guys, until, until next time, uh, I'm better from black Von distro. Of course, my co-host, uh, Kels McNell's, uh, tonight acting as the general's spider, the general spider wife. And I'm of course the rock and roll spider. Cause uh, I love John Goodman and I'm roughly the same size. So um, uh, listen until next time, if you'd like to hear another episode of uh, 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 if you have a suggestion for a future episode of nineties night, please leave it in the comments below. We'll try and add it to our list and get to it when we can. And also um, uh, please uh, like subscribe and hit that notification bell and you'll get notified when we put up the next episode as well. Until next time. Uh, that's all I got to say. Arachnophobia uh, with eight legs, two fangs, and an attitude. Let's take another look at the trailer before we go and have a great night. Don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> the Jennings family has just moved to the small town of Kanaima. Oh, Ross, smell that air. Oh, God. In search of a simpler life. 
Wanna blow up a bullfrog? Okay. It's the perfect place. Goodbye crime, goodbye crime. Except for one pesty little problem. Come with me and look at the web. The web? I have a terrible a... fear of spiders. Come on, we live in the country now. It's time to work through this irrational, paralyzing terror. It's not irrational. <laughs> Hollywood Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present Jeff Daniels. Honey, we're in the living room. We need you to kill a spider. And John Goodman. Bill McClintock, infestation management. Oh, I got it's just a spider. Would anybody object if I tore this floor out? I would. False alarm, then lead on. There's no spider here. Every so often, in a little town somewhere, there is a health scare. There's a rumor going around that some kind of spider might have killed Sam Metcalf. Doubtful. Spiders make convenient culprits. There's no spider here. I think one of your Venezuelan spiders hitched a ride here. There may be some spiders around here that are very dangerous. Dad, chill out. Just run. Oh! They spread out from a central nest in a web-like pattern and dominate the entire area. When that happens, this town is dead. Better encourage my private stock. Rock and roll! Hollywood Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present Arachnophobia, eight legs, two fangs, and an attitude. Perk up, Lloyd. If we find the spider that did this, you can arrest him. Arachnophobia, a thrillomedy. 